we call this high summer, when the plants are lush, the skies turbulent, the fruits are ripening, and everything is dripping in abundance. It's a time of delicious fresh foods and harvests. Today we're harvesting sumac and yarrow leaves. In the evenings, instead of TV or other tech-based diversions, we often choose charades on the back deck. Bowing to the goddess queen. Are you bowing to the meditator? You are the meditator. Yes. <laughs> Corn. Bull. Bull. Milking a cow. Moo. Bull. Think you're a monk. Monastery. No noises. I'm just laughing. It's a. 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 <laughs> Buddy. Long Kangaroo. 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 Rugu. Oh. <laughs> the skies finally brought us the much needed rain, sometimes in the form of storms. Can you see them? It's faint, but there's streaks coming down. There's going to be major rain hits us in just about a minute. Yeah, I think it's going to be a super downpour. Wow. <laughs> oh, look at it. See it? Streaking. Oh, it's so pretty. It's Isn't the rain pretty out there, you guys? Can you see it? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wet. Woo! It's wet. <laughs> <laughs> this gets you really excited, huh? It's fun! <laughs> Later that night, the lightning show was spectacular. A few days later, we got a call from a neighbor that there was an unidentified snake in their house. Liliana to the rescue. That's actually a fox. That's a fox snake. So, yeah, a little bit different ID. Oh, oh my god, I hit you. I know. How did that feel? <laughs> How did that feel? <laughs> How did that feel, Lily? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that's a pretty thing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Might take them over unless you guys want them to stay with them. Oh yeah, you can take them over. Oh, oh, it's the meter snake, huh? Yeah. 
Can you feel me? <laughs> Brandon was like, you're probably going to touch him. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I definitely did not want to touch him when he was all curled up. Can you explain that bite? It's so, way, it's way, it doesn't look hard for birds. Their teeth are so small. I mean, did you even break your skin? There's no blood? Oh, wow. No? Okay. Yeah, their teeth are the only use they have are to kind of grab onto a toad or other small creature and hold it. It doesn't, not even strong enough to break the skin. Well, these guys can get big. I mean, this is a baby. Okay. So the bigger ones, it would, you know, you'd have a little teeny pinpricks. Yeah. If you pressed your skin, yeah. you'd okay. milk a little blood out of it. Yeah. But it's still not anything yeah. like what you're used to from your, yeah. <laughs> from your land. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And now you're seeing... Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that was really cool. But it's weird my brain still has this thing. Like, <laughs> Moments like these are a great chance for people yeah, to meet a creature so up cool. close that can sometimes inspire trepidation. Liliana does a great job of modeling a relaxed and curious attitude, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, just let it explore. <laughs> That's awesome. After that, we took the snake back to our place to relocate it to our garden area. We'd like to have as many snakes as possible at Golden Wood. Up in the Wander Garden, we've taken some plants that have been crowding around the house and are bringing them up to have a new home. These include marshmallow, mints and currants. We also installed a bat house and listen to that. We already have bats. So Liliana, we had an interesting experience. You in particular were the star of the show <laughs> this past week. Do you want to share a little bit about what happened? Sure. <laughs> I was playing at my friend's house and like me, <laughs> I was climbing up a part of a, of a swing set that wasn't really where you climb up. That but, sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I put my hand down and I got stung by a bee, particularly a honeybee. Mm -hmm. After a while, I noticed that I felt like I had something stuck in my throat and I was starting to get a rash. So I decided this is probably a good time to go home. <laughs> and the only one who was in the house was Mirabelle. And so I was getting more of the rash and I noticed that my tongue was sort of getting a little bigger in one spot. So, I told Mirabel, I just said hello, and then I told her why I came home so early. And then she went and got mom. And what's your side of the story from here? <laughs> My side of the story. Okay, well, first it's important to realize that Liliana is a very nature-oriented creature. You might have seen her um, being bitten by a snake in this video. She's very curious. She doesn't let nature stop her. She's been stung by lots of things, including a bald-faced hornet that ran into her and decided that because she was standing in his or her way, she should just get stung. So she's been stung by lots of things, but she has never been stung by a honeybee. And I had never seen her react like this before. So I came in and I was surprised to find that her eyes were all red and her ears were all red and her face was all red. In fact, her whole body was red. And she had hives just going up and down all over her whole body. And so I thought, wow, that's different. <laughs> the interesting thing is that your dad, once a week, you get together with your friend group. And normally he does science over the winter, but what's he doing this summer? He is doing first aid. And what did he do last week in first aid? What did he cover? Anaphylactic shock mm -hmm. and how to do EpiPen. 
and how why you would need to do EpiPen because if some got stung by a bee <laughs> and right before this with our neighbors my mom was talking about how to you know help arthritis with honeybee venom <laughs> so that was really funny so you got to cover this with your friends you even practiced with the practice epipens on each other yes okay so back to the story we'll we'll wrap it up here quick because there's actually something a little bit deeper that i want to talk about here with you i gave liliana some benadryl immediately and then we called in kenton and we all assessed the situation everyone remained very calm and even though Liliana was scared, I'm sure Mirabel was scared, we were all a little, whoa, um, we decided she seems okay. So we did not administer an EpiPen. And we decided to drive into town. Um, along the way, Liliana experienced uh, both the dizziness and nausea and tightness of chest, all sorts of signs of uh, an anaphylactic reaction. Luckily, she wasn't in a severe case. We feel really blessed. And so we did eventually go into urgent care. We asked a person there, a nurse there, and she said, yes, you should probably come in and we'll just monitor you. Um, but she has got an EpiPen now and we um, have some things at our disposal. But what I think is interesting is that you don't feel like that was necessarily a negative experience. No, I actually think, first of all, I feel really bad for the poor little honeybee that died because it's on me. But also, <laughs> I am glad I got stung actually, so I know to try to stay sort of clear of honeybees. And that way I'm not just running through a field with honeybees all over in it. Yeah, although this is what's interesting to me. You're you're not afraid to go outside. For example, yesterday we were harvesting apples from our apple tree and there are apples all over the ground and it's the time of year when wasps and bees and things are out. And you were just out there harvesting barefoot, if I think about it. So Yes, and we were collecting apples and throwing them that had fallen to the ground, apples that had fallen to the ground, and throwing them into the forest and stuff because we don't want to step on them and get stung by a bee. And I actually saw a honeybee. <laughs> and I have to say, they are quite cute. <laughs> <laughs> what do you take away from this whole experience? What's your, what's your feeling about what happened? That I feel bad for the honeybee. You feel bad for the honeybee. And you feel grateful to know. What's your secret for not being afraid of nature, of the snake biting you, of being stung by a bee, of encountering a creature? Usually when we see something and we don't know what it is, you're the first person that's out the door, out the car to see what it is. How... If you could tell somebody out there, hey, you don't need to be afraid, or here's what I do, what do you have any wisdom? I guess I feel really connected with nature, and I sort of know that we sort of came from nature. We started in nature, and we were fine, and that we sort of are all one. Mm, wow. With nature, I guess. Wow, thank you for sharing your experience with us. I think it would be really wonderful, we all do, if any of you wanted to share with us some of the experiences you've been having over the summer or times that you've had an emergency situation and how you stayed calm or how you connect with nature and how you're able to maybe confront your fears of nature in order to be able to be a part of this whole great big adventure. So thank you so much for being part of our channel. We really appreciate all your comments and thank you for watching. Love to you all. She kept dreaming of a world.